Hi, everybody. I think we're live. And uh, I am not Alex Boguski, just in case you're wondering. I'm actually Rob Shuham. I'm a partner of Alex's. And this is a special edition show for Fearless TV. It's actually, we might call it Common TV someday, but this is a show about Common. And uh, we have a couple of very special guests today. Uh, sitting directly to my right is Nicole Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Jeff Oath, who is also part of the Common crew, if you will. And the three of us had the good fortune of being in Greensboro, Alabama, uh, over the past weekend, doing our first Common Startup Accelerator called the Common MBA, which actually in our vernacular stands for Maniacal Business Attack. And it wasn't just us three. There's yeah. a bunch of other <laughs> That's a good point, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> a few other people. Us and 17 other people, actually. Yeah. And um, uh, Nicole was one of the people that applied to be part of the Common MBA, uh, passed muster after doing a, a very thorough video of herself and her desires and why she wanted to be there. And um, Jeff didn't do much to be there other than actually <laughs> helping to design the MBA. Uh, I have no actually, idea why I'm on this show right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're but, pretty honest. That's good. And, yeah. and, and this will give viewers today the uh, the understanding that this is going to be a pretty deconstructed version of uh, of what you would normally see at this time. Um, but I think, uh, Jeff, we're going to get to you in just a second uh, and, and, and try and figure out exactly why you are on the show. Uh, Nicole, we have a pretty good idea of why you're on the show. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. And I'm going to sort of feed you a couple of things that you okay. wrote in your bio. Um, okay. My very, it was very serious. It, it was a very, very serious nervous. bio. Uh, I, I think what was particularly <laughs> serious is that you say that you're right-handed, except when you play croquet or toss oh. pizza. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, and that's serious stuff. I mean, you got to know which hand you're going to be, you know, leading with in the croquet mallet or whatever. Um, but, but, uh, you, you started a company in 2006. Uh -huh. You want to talk a little uh -huh. bit about it? Sure. Um, so I started a company called Infinity Kombucha. And for those of you that don't know, kombucha is a fermented tea. It's a live probiotic tea. So it has a lot of benefits similar to, yogurt, but then it also has a lot of organic acids and helps detoxify the liver. And um, I just started making it in my kitchen. And one day I thought, wow, this would be a really great business idea. Although I didn't have a background in brewing or fermented things. Uh, so, uh, but I was excited about it and I took that passion and turned it into a business. Very cool. Which you sold. Which I sold <laughs> three and a half years later to um, the Hain Celestial Group. And now um, I manage the brand of Celestial Seasonings Kombucha. Nice. Mm -hmm. And um, why is it called Kombucha? Where does the name Kombucha come from? Uh, well, there's, there's a great story uh, about that. So um, in Japan, this, this story is, we can't verify this necessarily, but... 2,000 years ago in Japan, supposedly the emperor of Japan at the time was ill, and his, uh, you know... Somebody sneezed, he went, kombucha? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, he, they, he called the doctor to come heal him. The doctor's name was Kombu, and brought this weird tea, cha, in Japanese. And so the, the term kombu's tea, kombucha, was then given to the tea. Nice. Yeah. All right. Good little background. <laughs> I like that. And so you're now still working at Celestial Seasonings. Yes. On the on that brand or yes, I'm, the brand technically. Changed, right? I'm, well, yeah. So my brand was Infinity, but uh, you know they were like um, you sell in seven states, and that's really great. But um, Celestial Seasonings is an international brand and so of course more people would recognize that name and so they leveraged the celestial seasonings name and then rebranded it got it and, and we also re redeveloped it i mean some of the some of the flavors now are based off of my flavors but then we really geared them towards the functions uh that are inherent in kombucha and so you know it, it is a different brand than what i had got it are you were you sad when your brand went away or are you are you okay 
Uh, I, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. Um, Nothing the, that a little bit of money and a good job can't solve. <laughs> right, kind exactly. Of, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, oh well, hmm, you know, when you're right. when you're working for yourself, it's like you know, you're doing everything. And I was wondering, should I pay myself five hundred dollars this month? Uh, right. You know. Right. And now it's it's nice to have a little more security. Got it. Good. All right, Jeffrey. Yeah. Um, you don't really talk about which handed you are or what you do when you play croquet in uh, in your bio. No. Um, but, do you but play one, croquet? No. Uh. I'd like to try. Uh, but Jeff and I had uh, the good fortune, even though we kind of work at the same desk upstairs and sort of look at each other and... <laughs> Um, but, but we've never really had time together. And so we did this kind of road trip through Alabama, uh, which was wonderful. It was sort of yeah, like a, searching for coffee in it Birmingham. Was, it was beautiful. It was not like a common much luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you grew up in Madison, yeah. Wisconsin, and, yeah. um, you studied graphic design somewhere around there. Yeah. Right? University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And you worked at a few yeah. agencies. Yeah. Then I, um, after college, I moved to Minneapolis looking for looking for work because my older brother was working in advertising up there. So I ended up finding a, a job in St. Cloud, Minnesota, which is a nice little town, but um, very cold. <laughs> and um, it ended up just not being where I wanted to be long term. So I, I ended up moving back to Milwaukee and um, I was there for about six or seven years working for different design firms in Milwaukee. Right. And then um, about a year and a half ago, um, I was at a point where I was working freelance just on my own. And um, my girlfriend was applying to grad schools, um, looking to study urban planning. And she decided she wanted to study it in Denver. So we moved from Milwaukee to Denver. Um, I kept the freelance thing going. Um, <laughs> Alex is giving us yeah. signs. Um, so anyway, I was working freelance. I was getting really into sustainability at the time. So I knew that that's kind of where I wanted to focus my energy and my design efforts. Um, and shortly after that, um, I saw Alex tweet that they were looking for design help here at the cottage. Um, so that's kind of how I ended up here. <laughs> Good story. And, and then ended up in a car with me right. in search of coffee, not kombucha, sorry about that, <laughs> okay. on our way to Greensboro, North Carolina for the Common mm -hmm. MBA. Um, just a quick note to everybody, if you want to tweet in your questions to uh, at Fearless Force, we, we'd, love to, we'd love to get them. So ask anything you want, uh, within reason, of course, uh, and uh, we'll, do, we'll make our best attempts to answer some of those questions. Um, so maybe what we can do now is talk a little bit about the Common MBA and, and sort yeah. of what our experience is. And, and some of you may or may not notice that somewhere in this frame is a bamboo bicycle. Uh, and watch out for the pedal. Don't, don't hit your head against it. Um, but that is a Common Cycles bamboo bike. And uh, we were down in Greensboro, North Carolina for... Alabama. What I say? North Carolina. I have it on the mind. You know, I was thinking Charlotte. Is that North Carolina? I don't even yeah. know. Uh, no. uh, basketball, whatever. Good catch. Uh, Greensboro, Alabama. Thanks for the correction there. And um, it, we we were there to launch a new company and uh, and build something really interesting. And uh, um, I, I think it might help before we kind of get deep into sort of what the Common MBA is about. Um, why bamboo, maybe? and why that bike is made out of bamboo. Um, and, and, and maybe what we can do is lay some facts into the, uh, the story. But uh, bamboo, just uh, in case people are wondering, it's, it is, and these are some uh, amazing factoids that I found <laughs> about bamboo. It is the fastest growing woody plant on earth. Um, it is not a tree. Woody plant. I like woody that. plant. <laughs> it's, it's actually a, a grass. It is a grass. But it, it feels like wood. That's a right. A lot of people think uh -huh. it's wood. That's right. Um, and uh, a couple of other things, and, and we'll keep coming back to some of these facts. Uh, uh, bamboo actually has better tensile and compression strength than steel. Uh, so when you actually build a bamboo bike, uh, it, it probably won't fall apart, or at least your steel bike might stand a better chance of failure uh, in some instances. 
Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the Common MBA and what we did down there. Do you want to talk a little bit about your experience, Nicole? And uh, sure. Um, before, well, before I went, you know, people would ask me, "What, what are you doing? You're going to Alabama?" Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to Alabama. <laughs> then they were a little perplexed. Um, and why are you going to Alabama? Uh, I think I'm launching a bike company with a bunch of people I've never met before. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I showed up, and there were a bunch of people I never met before, and we were working on designing the company and trying to figure out you know what what were we going to stand for and what actually were we were we trying to do and um, we spent three days trying to trying to figure that out and it was really exciting but then it ended up becoming really a, a lot more than that and and we did a lot more than I expected just with you know going out and seeing all the things with Project M and what Project M is doing and and then it it evolved into really kind of creating more of a community and I think building a brand that um, building a brand that's trying to empower a community and change transform a community through developing a bicycle Mm -hmm. which I I think uh, wasn't expected I guess for me in, in some ways that's, nice. that's what I loved was all these people came together a bunch of really smart people with a lot of experience and most of them had no idea what exactly they were doing <laughs> so and they didn't ask a lot of questions they just saw that this was a really cool opportunity to get together and create something and see what happened and we still don't know where it's going next but you know the wheels are in motion and we're trying to make something happen good pun <laughs> yeah, um, yeah and, and Jeff, I, I think it's a really interesting point. What, what what was sort of your takeaway from the town of Greensboro? Like, what did you see there that, that yeah, inspired and, you? Um, and it wasn't just me. I, I was just there more as an observer, taking photos and shooting the, the live streaming video that we shot throughout the entire process. Um, but what I, what I saw, what was really cool with all the participants, they kind of fell in love with the town of Greensboro and... They saw what Pam Dor and John Bielenberg had done there and, and all the people that they work with. And they saw that this town, which is in one of the poorest counties in the country, um, if you just have a little bit of momentum going, you can do some pretty amazing things. And so that's kind of why we fell in love with it and why all these other people, once they got down there, they, they saw these opportunities and they, they wanted to to do something in that town. Mm -hmm. I I thought what was really interesting was that we all went down there, um, you know, with, with, I think some preconceived notions of kind of what we might launch. You know, we, we knew it was going to be a bamboo bike. We knew it was going to be common cycles. Uh, when you think about the bike industry, you kind of think about, uh, producing manufactured bikes and then selling them at a bike shop or at a Walmart Mm -hmm. or wherever you do it. And I'm not sure we came out with that result. I think we came out with a slightly different take on what a bike company might be and what it might do. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I, I think that um, what we determined was that in, you know, at first we were going to build the kits for these bikes and then people could buy the kits or buy the frames online but but really I think the I mean meaning that you buy a kit and you actually build the frame yourself yes yeah. yeah so right you're buying all the pieces so it's not like you open it up and then you just put wheels on it and mm-hmm. and go that the part of the experience of common cycles is going to be in in building the bike and having the bike experience and uh, but then another aspect is um, having the the kind of bike studio there and making Greensboro the hub so that if you want to have a bikecation or buildcation, you can go to Greensboro and and work there and and build your bike. Right. Which which by the way starts to answer uh, a question that was tweeted in from Jeff Lesser who asked, "What's the distribution strategy for Common Cycles?" and what I like is that the distribution strategy is that you actually build your bike and then you put it on a plane or put it in your car and take, take it home it. and that's how it gets distributed to you. <laughs> <laughs> you distribute it to yourself. Right. <laughs> and for, they can still get it and, and still have the experience on their own, uh, you know, in yeah. their garage or wherever. I, I think we talked about it. We talked about one of the concepts being a buildcation, 
Uh-huh. You kind of come down for a few days, you learn how to build the frame, you build it yourself, and, and then you spend a couple of days taking your bike and riding it around Greensboro. And uh, we thought that was pretty interesting because Greensboro in and of itself is an amazing place. I mean, just mm-hmm. rural town that's still, to me, seems to be in a bit of a cycle of poverty, but with um, you know, sort of incremental change towards less poverty. And, and, and what, I, what struck me is that there was a sort of central area of thought leadership in Greensboro and, um, and, you know, around PyLab, which is another business that was started through the project, through Project M a few years ago. So there's a place for people to gather and start talking and conversing um, and, and, and actually started to revitalize this Main Street area, which had been dilapidated up until a few years ago. So now we've, I think we've got some interest, there's some interesting energy in Greensboro and, and the rural studio which we saw. Mm-hmm. And Jeff, do you want to talk a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we, we should mention where a lot of this momentum started. Yeah. It was with um, the Rural Studio, which is a, an architecture program at Auburn University. And the, this guy, an architect professor named Samuel Mockby, took students into rural Al- Alabama and they just started building these amazing structures um, with very little money, very little resources. And they just... Um, went into these areas and just saw what they could do in a short amount of time. And they started building these fantastic houses and um, different kinds of shelters. And we saw some of those that that's part of why I think everyone kind of fell in love with the areas. Cause we, we did these little field trips during the day and, and saw some pretty cool stuff. And luckily we had some good uh, tour guides with Pam and John. Yeah. Um, so that's, um, so that was Samuel Mockby and um, John Bielenberg, who's a, a partner with Common. He was in, inspired by him, and that's why Project M is called Project M, named after Mockby. Right. Um, so he's been going down to Alabama for, I don't know how long, eight years or, or more. Um, and they've done these uh, two-week projects where they just do amazing things in a short amount of time with young creative people. Yeah. Um, and so he's also worked with Pam Doerr, who is, um, we should talk a little bit about yeah. her. Um, maybe maybe and, this would be a good time to look at some of the pictures. Yeah, yeah. It, we're, we're talking yeah. about it, and sometimes it's hard to visualize <laughs> uh, what we're talking about. So and this is downtown Greensboro. It this probably looks like a lot of small towns in the, in the U.S. Uh, I think, when would you say they're, they're you know, most robust economy was like in the 50s yep. so it's since then it's kind of um you know yeah <laughs> this is uh this is the inside of pi lab and that woman's pam door you want to talk a little bit about pam yeah sure pam i just met her this weekend and but john's been working with her for a long time and she's one of these just amazingly ins- inspirational people that she's really smart she has a a background in design, but she's she's now working in Greensboro with Hero Housing, um, and what they what they're doing is helping people um, have affordable homes, yeah. um, and so they're doing a lot of great things there. And this is Pi Lab, which started as a Project M project with with John, and that was just. To give away free pot. Yeah, it started like as a bake sale. <laughs> what like, can you do in a town to sort of lift spirits and and sort of you know get conversations rolling? And the group, when they were dropped in for two weeks, one of the things that one of the ideas that came up is, well, why don't we just bake and give away pie? Yeah. <laughs> and, and and John sort of described it. He said that moment was it wasn't an eye rolling moment. It was a moment of. Okay, let's see where this goes. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens here. Um, and the, I'm going to pick up where you left off sure. because then, then what ultimately happened to make a long story short is they they built a business out of selling pie and 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 the you know the thinking being that that pie um, you know it, it, you can have conversations around pie. You eat pie slow. You mm. sit down. There's you know it's a meal occasion. It's a dessert occasion. And you know have some coffee while you're at it too. <laughs> And, and, and I think what's really notable about Pi Lab in Greensboro, Alabama, 
is that last year uh, it, 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 it was innovative enough in the interiors and we'll show, do we have another shot probably? Yeah. Um, innovative enough in the interiors and you can see actually the uh, uh, common MBA in session but you can see some of these, the, the walls and how they did it. Um, was interesting enough that it actually came in second place in the James Beard Awards for interior design uh, last yeah. year. And it, and it came second to the new Guggenheim restaurant, which is mind blowing. <laughs> so pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. And, uh, you know, so as more businesses like this kind of start to, you know, take root and hopefully common cycles, I would say is one of mm -hmm. them, you know, hopefully we'll see this main street area start to, uh, you know, sort of become alive again. Um, this is, so this is, uh, that's actually a picture of the MBA. Those are the roughly 20 or so people that were there. Uh, and, and that was, that talks a little bit about the process right there. And I think you can actually see, Jeff, you're not in that picture. I uh, took the photos. That's right. Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, where are you? In the back. Is that you? Uh, that no, could, that's Anna. Okay. That could be Anna. I'm hiding. You're hiding. <laughs> So this was oh, like the, the first day um, and it started with, you know, Alex, Rob, John kind of setting the stage. And but very quickly after that, it ended up being every, all the participants were the ones up front sharing their ideas. So that was really cool. Yeah. One of the one of the big questions on the third day was kind of who's going to step up <laughs> and commit and own this business, so to speak, and really drive it forward. And uh I, Nicole Giavese sort of raised her <laughs> will and, and, uh, and, and sort of took, yeah, <laughs> took one of the key positions. So there, you know, there's a few people uh, mm -hmm. who did it. So let's keep firing through some of these pictures. Uh, <laughs> this is the bunkhouse. Now, yeah. I don't think you, did you sleep in the bunkhouse? Uh -huh. <laughs> Were you the only woman in the bunkhouse? Uh, well, no, Jack was there. Oh, Jack it, was there it, too. Okay, uh -huh. cool. Did you guys share a bunk? Did you no. go top and bottom? Or no, no, because um, I ended up not actually sleeping there on Thursday night. So I, I got the last bunk. Ah. So, right. yeah. And by the way, why were you not there Thursday night? I think some weather uh, patterns might have occurred. No, uh, no, our plane had mechanical failure. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you I know. I thought you we, had the tornado excuse. Mm -hmm. so. No, I and, no, I didn't. Um, so we were we were leaving Denver, and uh, a door on the bottom of the plane came open, and so you could kind of tell the plane wasn't getting enough altitude and wasn't flying very fast. And so the pilot came on the air and said, "You know, we're turning back around. We have to go back to Denver." And and at that point, is that like the good news is the top of the plane didn't rip off, <clears throat> right? And and he actually, I mean, he made it sound worse than it was because he said, "Okay, so we're gonna land and." There's going to be lots of noise, and you might see sparks coming from the plane, dragging on the runway, and then, you know, um, the and emergency then it, and vehicles then, and are going to come. And then an explosion, come. and then you'll see nothing. <laughs> right. And the emergency vehicles are going to come, but it, it'll all be fine. And uh, so I held hands with the woman next to me. Wow. <laughs> and we landed, but then I missed my connecting flight. I, so, I had no idea it was such it was, a... a wild experience well you know it's kind of funny for me because as an entrepreneur uh, and you know now like working for a bigger company um i think entrepreneur still really defines who i am so that was one of the reasons why i wanted to join and be part of this event and it was really exciting and then i was on the plane like yes this is like moving into my future and then the pilot says we're turning around and i was really upset with him about right that. but it all worked out great but you're an entrepreneur. You know there's always little hiccups yeah, right. and speed bumps. So really, it was, right. it was a good it metaphor was... for what's about to come, right? Yeah. All right, we lost our picture here. Um, so uh, you were in the bunk. So how was the, the, how was the bathroom in the bunkhouse? How it was, well, I mean, of course, everyone was... Um, you know, real, really accommodating that Jack and I were the only women. So, because uh, there were multiple showers in the bunkhouse, but they would leave us alone while yeah. we showered and Got then, it. you know. And in front of the toilet, <laughs> there's just a curtain. Curtain, right, yeah, <laughs> no there's door. a curtain, right. There, well, there was a door, like, into actual room where okay. the bathroom was, but, like, 
in front of the toilet and in front of the showers, it was, yeah, just curtains. So you guys uh, kind of guarded the door for each other? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I think everybody was, was pretty aware and conscientious of yeah. <laughs> who was in there. All right. We've covered the bunkhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this picture. This is um, working with bamboo and sort of starting to get our heads around kind of what the mm-hmm. note, you know, what this is all about. Um, do we have another picture of harvest? Of, of yeah, we do, the yeah. bamboo harvest? Uh, yeah, th- so that was kind of a thinking wrong process here, where sorry. people are just kind of experimenting, trying different ideas, yeah. um, seeing what this company could possibly be, you know, whether it's a good idea or not, and just getting everything out there. Yeah. Um, um, John Sloss asked the question, where does the bamboo come from? Uh, right here, it looks like it comes from a picnic table. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there's another slide there's, coming there's, up. There's but... a, a shot we're going to show later on of us actually uh, a very you know futile attempt to uh, uh, harvest some bamboo. But the answer is in Greensboro, Alabama. One of the reasons that this place um, it, it is so interesting uh, in terms of a bamboo bike company is because uh, bamboo grows naturally. All over the place. Like there. a weed. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a weed. And uh, yeah, the, the the woman who owned this little B and B that I stayed at, was just like, are you going to get rid of that bamboo? Because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> it's like, yes, we'll do our best to get rid of all. Of them. We'll make as many bikes as we right. possibly can. Uh, but it, I mean, it grows on roadsides. It grows, you know, around ponds. It grows all over the place. That was really surprising to me um, because I often said, well, when are we going to see the bamboo? We'd be driving around. People said, oh, you just drove by it and just <laughs> yeah it's everywhere uh, it, it's, it's everywhere, everywhere. It everywhere. <laughs> and it, had somebody not actually pointed it out to me i would have never looked on the side of the road and said oh wow look at all that bamboo yeah uh, this might be a good time yeah. to throw in a few more little bamboo tidbits um so so more reasons for being for bamboo uh conventional hardwood forests take many more years to regrow than bamboo bamboo uh, takes like one year right it takes one year it's, it's got a, really it's got fast. a very quick cycle mm-hmm. to it uh, it's, it's a very renewable resource uh, because it actually absorbs more CO2. Um, the, the cultivation of it does not require the use of pesticides and fertilizers, and, and what you do use with it is often organic. So um, it's, and, and, and just that whole CO2 absorption at rapid rates while it grows makes it a, you know, makes it a very sustainable uh, crop for sure. Uh, and, and I think the good news there is that we probably have more than enough bamboo yeah. that's naturally occurring. Uh, however, uh, our understanding is that the Alabama governor's wife was so inspired by, by common cycles and what she saw in sort of previous attempts at this company uh, that, that they ended up, uh, the state of Alabama and a few other states has allocated 800,000 acres towards bamboo growing. And that's that's really intriguing. So yeah, not and, they're, just for, and they're branding it Alabamboo, it, yeah. which is a, which is so a brilliant that's name. A yeah. 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 Do you want to point without knocking the bike over? I don't think we can see. Yeah, that I don't think we can see it. We got a little sticker made with Alabamboo. But, um, so for all the all the bike nuts and the spoke sniffers like myself, <laughs> uh, think of it as like Reynolds tubing or Columbus tubing or Easton tubing. So so the tubing would be Alabamboo tubing, if you will. Uh, being used to make a common cycle or common bike. Yeah, so. and you know, there's always the concern when something is like a green product. It's like, okay, so what am I sacrificing? Right. And with this, there's really no sacrifice in quality. You know, we had these bike experts there, and they wouldn't have been there if they thought that bamboo was a sacrifice of any kind. They know that it's it's a great material to build a bike out of. It's very durable and long lasting and, and that it's a great ride from what they yeah. say. So I'm not a bike expert, but we had guys that were experts there. Definitely. We had cynics who were converts at the end. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, this is just a little side note. Uh, I, I, I talked a few minutes ago to the tornadoes. We literally flew in the day after um, you know, the worst tornadoes ever had hit Alabama. And um, so it, it, it was a little bit of a bittersweet, I think, sort of, you know, landing, your landing notwithstanding, uh, <laughs> you know, in a Birmingham and sort of seeing a lot of destruction and damage. And um, we were, in fact, a few days before that, I think we were, were all questioning, should we even go? And I, to me, and I don't know 
if you if you two feel the same way, it felt like it kind of sharpened the edges a little bit and gave what we were doing a little bit more meaning. Yeah. In terms of giving back to not only that town but you know potentially the region. I don't know if you especially yeah when we kind of drove around and saw some of the damage, it it really hit home. Yeah. It, it, I don't know about about you, but it, I think you were there, it, Nicole. Right? Yeah, and actually, I mean, it was really hard, especially speaking to this picture. Um, you know, the woman was there, and then trying to figure out where her kitchen was. We should so, say what this is. It was a, a trailer home that basically got picked up and just blasted across this several across, hundred feet. Yeah, yeah. across yeah. the trees. So what you see right here is the metal frame of the trailer wrapped around a tree and then the rest of the house just blasted yeah and there's there's an overturned car just over here yeah it, it it almost felt like you took this mobile home and you put it through a cheese grater um because it went through all these trees so it, 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 i don't know my impression was you know unlike the fires that were here where you know you see this destruction but it's blacked you know it's, it's black and remains mm -hmm. and stuff nothing kind of nothing burned so you see everything. Yeah. You know, it's just so bizarre. Like this person's, this, uh, I felt so badly for her. It's like her entire life, you know, was just put through this. I, I think what's hard about that too is when, you know, here we come from Boulder, people have a lot. Yeah. You know, you're very fortunate. You live in this great town. And then you go here and these people have a lot of nothing. And then they have more nothing and they're trying yeah. to salvage. Like, whatever yeah. they can yeah and, and that, that was really <laughs> lisa hard. kept saying when driving by this kind of stuff she would just say oh i just want to throw money out the window yeah. and you and do it's like you just want to do anything you what can, can you do? Yeah. yeah so it i you know it was it, it definitely it was a little bizarre kind of being mm -hmm. and i and i felt badly because it's not like we were able to jump in and do anything so but I, I i do feel i felt you guys tell me if you feel the same way it made our mission more powerful definitely so, yeah. i think and well when we when we talked sometimes with some of the locals people at first thought that we were there for tornado cleanup and then we're like no yeah. we're not right. we're building a bike we're building company a in your town and I, but they were still excited about that and in a way too then i was like oh well, that's kind of neat we don't have to talk anymore about the tornado we can talk about you guys coming yeah. in and building we should company. mention uh hero housing pam's organization is providing a lot of relief to these people so yeah. if you go to herohousing.org you can donate and they're doing a lot of great work and it's immediate like any money that they're getting in is going straight to these straight people. to the recovery efforts yeah, yeah. We, we actually were impacted a little bit because a few of the common MBA participants actually got pulled out uh, as part of Project Hero to go help yeah. and, and work in the recovery efforts for sure. I'll, uh, I'll move ahead. Let's, uh, a slightly lighter note, um, not if you're the person that's suffering from a bamboo invasion in your backyard, but um, this was us attempting to harvest bamboo <laughs> and really doing a lousy job of it. It was, it was a joke. Yeah, we yeah. probably should have brought a saw or something yeah, with yeah. us, but we started yanking but, it But out. it was also a great learning experience about how strong bamboo is. Yeah. Right. I know. Well, there was a picture at some point, I don't know if it's in here, where there's at least eight of you trying to pull out this one, yeah. one bamboo shoot, and we're unsuccessful. Yeah. We were, we were weak men. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun, as you can see on Eric's face. Yeah. Right. It, this looks like uh, one of the sites that we looked at to actually house common cycles. Um, was this, this is the Roman Colosseum, right? Or yeah, they, they called call it, the, it the Alamo. The Alamo, the Alamo yeah. that's right. We <laughs> called it the Alamo. And that's actually Alex, and that's uh, Steve Bemke, who is one of the bike industry experts that was with us at the Common MBA. Uh, has quite a following himself, and... Uh, I would say he came in a little jaded and a little <laughs> cynical and kind of left fired up. That oh, was, yeah. That was really time. cool. Yeah, and he really liked this space because he wanted to put in a, what do they call them? A pump track. Pump, pump track, track, yeah, which is like a skate park for bikes. He thinks that would be a, a really cool way to, to get kids in the town riding bikes and having fun. Yeah, so imagine these these are just walls. There's no roof in this area. And uh, and next to it is this kind of badass old warehouse, right, that yeah. you can use for, like, fixing cars or something. And we have this, like, 
great fantasy of, you know, we got a shop. It'll be a little bit like the fix in Boulder, and we'll have a track outside in the Alamo. And so we were all fired up about that. Um, the only problem was, I think, that they actually wanted us to buy the space versus one of the other buildings, right? Which yeah. we could kind of get for free. Yeah, and Steve was pretty fired up about this space, but he didn't like that it's half a block off Main Street. He liked this yeah. other space even better that's right on Main I Street. On Main Street. <laughs> He's like, I want everyone coming down to see this. Yeah. And there, we should mention there are kids in town riding around on bikes. When, when we went around to look at some of the houses right. that Hero built, um, there were kids just coming up to us on their bikes, popping wheelies, showing off. So yeah. that was a lot of fun. This is... Uh... Back to the bamboo, because it's all about the bamboo, <laughs> right? Um, this is Mark, I think, yeah. right? And and Mark, who worked actually on this bike that's that's back here behind the two of you, which is still there, by the way. Um, it, it, I keep thinking it's going to fall forward. <laughs> uh, prop fall. Uh, this is this is Mark showing us how you take bamboo from you know sort of the harvested green bamboo and you you fire it. Mm -hmm. so that it becomes hardened yeah and just kind of torching it yeah and then after this this kind of gets all the sugars out in the water and then after this you bake it yeah do, do you think that's uh. going to be strong enough or <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I, I like Bamboo. the baking part yeah, right. it, the one thing that was interesting <laughs> is <laughs> it smelled great yeah, right? It did, right. Like barbecue. And was it, and somebody uh, had the idea, well, we, we need to make bamboo sugar, you know, <laughs> and, and what other products can we be making off of this, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole process is just a lot of fun. It's just this very DIY kind of process of figuring out how to put this thing together. And part of the, what common cycles will do is make that process easier to understand, but you know, this is just us kind of having fun here. Alex and John and Zeke getting in there, playing around with the bamboo. Yeah. We should mention that the entire Bogusky family descended upon <laughs> Greensboro <laughs> for this adventure. Whoop, I skipped it. That's the crew. Uh, that's, that's everybody. And even including the uh, pie shop people who yeah. kept us very well fed throughout the entire process. That was very important. Yeah, not just pie. A yeah. lot of delicious salads yeah. and yeah. We catfish. Should def catfish, too. <laughs> uh, we should probably point out Lisa Jula, who's also a fearless person there. She looks incredibly <laughs> elated and happy. That might be because it was the last day. <laughs> and she was probably minorly exhausted from planning this whole thing. This is the uh, the store. This is the storefront, which is actually going to be... I'm going to let you take this one, Nicole. Um, all right. Well, this is going to be the um, the bike lab. So if you want to come and, and build your bike, you will build it in this, in this area here. And then I think, you know, some of it is yet to be determined about the upstairs, what's going to happen upstairs, or if it's going to be places for people to stay, or if it's going to be more office design space but right now you know the, the first goal is to get the this floor um, cleaned out and and start building a few bikes for the ride for the ride that's right uh, a little bit more uh, inside that area that needs a good cleaning and um, I think that's it for the moment I think that's what so we those have. are all the photos yeah so we're gonna close this we do have more on a Flickr account um, Common Works is the Flickr account if you want to look there. Lots more photos. Yeah. Um, we had a question. Yeah. Uh, somebody tweeted in, how do you get involved if you miss the NBA? Uh, you don't. You're not. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> you failed to apply. Um, there, there are a number of different ways you can get involved. Uh, in terms of common cycles, you can certainly come down and uh, once we get it launched. Right, I come down to Greensboro. And do a buildcation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, 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 I, don't, I don't think the company is fully formed yet. I think we're still mm -hmm. working through a little bit of that. You want to talk about that? Yeah, well, a lot of <laughs> the, make, make it up. <laughs> make it up. That's right. Well, a lot of it's been. I, I guess I walked away with the title of um, project manager, um, and but uh, a lot, a lot of that's still being formed, and it'll be interesting to see maybe who falls out a little bit, who wants more responsibility. But 
you know, what I put together in the beginning is our first 30 day goals. And our goal is to get bikes ready for the ride across America. And, um, most of so America. most of part of yeah, America, we, right? East. Of I there, think that you couldn't put part of ride across part of yeah. America from, from <laughs> Greensboro <laughs> West, right? And so we have some some riders who are going to be going down to Greensboro, building their bamboo bikes, and then then riding across part of America. So that that's our first goal. It goes to San Francisco, right? I think it's a ride. So. It starts yeah. in Greensboro, ends in San, San Francisco. Francisco. And does it come through so, Boulder? Yeah, I think it, does. it does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. we'll have to have a little <laughs> yeah. like, parade for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, then now my plan is to work on the next 180 day plan. Got it. So will so. we will we get 30 days into it? Do you think? Will we will we will we, we accomplish the, uh, I, the objectives I hope so. of getting to the actual so. launch? Of the yeah, race I hope not? so. Mm-hmm. Cool. So there are some other ways to get involved. I'll fire off some websites. Um, Common that is is the new common website that we've launched where people are submitting ideas, um, sharing thoughts on other people's ideas. Uh, so if you log in there, you can create your own profile and start just playing around with any, basically anything that you think was is common worthy. And, it, and, the, and, <laughs> and I'm there's just going to add something there. The more people that join Common is, is. Common dot is, uh, the bigger our community. And the more social good we can do as a community. So, right. uh, you know, bigness to us is about betterness. I just made that up. Um, <laughs> Sounded like good. It. Should we go with it? <laughs> yeah. Betterment. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and we do want people in the community because we want dialogue. We want conversations and we want to be able to do more of these companies. Yeah. So keep going. Yeah. And there's a, a group started for Common Cycles. So if you want to be involved in discussions, you can join there and kind of share your thoughts. Um, another thing, we just launched a Facebook page for Common Cycles. That that's facebook.com slash Common Cycles. Um, like it, there'll be lots more information coming there. Um, as far as the the El Bamboo ride that they're doing, you can follow them on Twitter. Uh, I think it's twitter.com slash ride El Bamboo. Um, what we'll, we'll have all this posted mm-hmm. on. Yeah, the yeah. And then if people want to get involved with that, the actual company, should they contact you? <laughs> yeah, they can do that. <laughs> they can do that. Uh, my, you want to know my email? Should I send my email? Or we, we, we can, put that out? We can post it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, we'll... So, th- so that's actually, I'm, I'm going to turn it back to Maybe we'll make that a part of the site if people want to get involved. Get involved. They can ask Nicole. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay. We'll, we'll do an ask Nicole. We'll have a section of... It's coming together right now. Yeah. You can't tell. I mean, what are we, four days out from this whole thing? That's right. Um, but I, I have to give you some kudos, Nicole, because um, you, you know you, you, we go through this three-day process. And uh-huh. um, you, you could, I mean, Pi Lab was covered with, you know, giant post-it notes and, and stuff and all the things that we needed to do. And it became so massive, I, I think. And uh-huh. I remember Saturday night, we're all together having dinner and we're like, you know, at some point we've got to, you know, bring it all together because <laughs> tomorrow's the day. I mean, we got to have right. a company by the end of the day. Yeah. And, um, and we well, it was like, the more we talked, the, the bigger our yeah. vision became. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and so sort of the, there was a sort of paralysis of overwhelming <laughs> bigness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and I thought what you did a great job at was sort of, that offer to kind of chunk it out and make it and turn it into manageable steps. And you as an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, you know how to do that. Right. And uh, yeah, and I think that for me, when I started my, my own business, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but when I was thinking about making tea, I had never, never had a tea company. I was, was not in the brewing industry. And when I actually sat down to think about what I was doing when I started my business, it was, you know, Oh, oh my God, how am I ever going to make 5,000 gallons of tea? Like, obviously here in Boulder, you know, you go into a lot of beer breweries and you, you see the equipment and things that they have to make all this beer. So I was trying to translate it to tea and, and it was really overwhelming. And, and thankfully I had a friend step in and say, you know, don't, don't worry about making 5,000 gallons of tea. Just make a hundred and, you know, part it out. So... So that really helped me, and then I think that I'm able I'm able to 
to do that, um, which is which is nice. I'm trying, you know, try not to get paralyzed by that bigger vision because I think uh, part of the problem with people not taking risks and you know, lots of people have dreams of doing something more, and I think the reason why they don't do it is they get paralyzed by the bigger vision, and and so it just kind of stops them in their tracks when, you know, just sign up on the Secretary of State for the business name right. first. Right. <laughs> you know, that's what you have to do first. And then if you can manage those small pieces, before you know it, you're you're in business. Yeah, I... I that's awesome, and I and I think that'll be that'll be great because that'll instruct other common companies that come out of it. Mm -hmm. It would be cool to see you sort of say, "Don't get overwhelmed." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> here's the here's the playbook. Here's what we did for right. common cycles, and right. um, you know, and you you can get overwhelmed. You know, you can like get overwhelmed like in your pillow at home and scream for a minute and be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but then just get out of it real quick. And right. Get back to the baby steps. Cool. Yeah. How, um, you know, it's, I, I thought what was interesting is that, I, actually I'm gonna, ret I'm gonna go back a half a step. When we were curating, and, and Jeff and I were both in this process, when we were curating the group, um, I mean, you stuck out just as like, kish, kish, you know, like thinking <laughs> like, like, you know, this is great, you know, uh -huh. finally somebody who, you know, knows how to actually start a small company and then sort of take it into bigness. Uh -huh. we talk a lot about bigness. <laughs> um, and and uh, and Jeff, you want to talk a little bit about that curation process? And um, sure, it was. Well, we got we got really lucky because we had some awesome applicants and and a very short amount of time. We had to get this thing up in just a few weeks and. So luckily Nicole and a few other really smart people applied and we got to watch their, their videos, which is just a great way for us to kind of get to know their personality and their background. Um, so yeah. yeah, it worked out really well. And it's great because it took me two weeks to do that video. <laughs> Did it really? Yeah. Yeah. I had, I wrote it out tons of times. And you I said worked it, with the life you, coach. It took, it took a few coach. takes. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, it took a few takes. Because, you know, I'm not like an editor. So I, first yeah. I was going to break it down into smaller pieces and, and do the, the sections, the four topics that we talked about. And then I thought, I'm not an editor. I just need to do one shot. So. And you nailed it. Thank yeah. you. Thank Hit you. Your mark. <laughs> um, and, and, and actually, as we do more of these common startup accelerators, be it a common MBA, be it common project, which is going to be a little bit of a riff off of Project M, which is going to be a two-week format. And by the way, our first one coming up, the second, the back half of June is for the $300 house or common house. And, and we're actually going to go back to... Uh, the same place to go work on this. There's reasons why Jeff sort of described it a little bit through the rural project and some of the inspiration we can find down there. But the way that we're going to actually uh, continue to sort of bring participants in the group is through this curation process and and uh, and having people submit videos. And we didn't know what we were going to get. And <laughs> you know, yours is terrific. I mean, everybody's was great. Uh, so, some stood out a little bit more. Uh, some were a little like, are we really going to bring this person in? Yeah. And it was like, no, no, let's see through the video. Yeah. And I, I think we're pretty good at that process, but it, it works. And, uh, and, and, and actually doing a video, I don't know if you would agree, Jeff, it sort of indicates to us that you kind of have skin in the game and that you yeah. really want to be there as opposed to just, oh, I'll hit the apply button. And, yeah, exactly. You know, fill out a data sheet and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, a little bit of effort. Write a check. Yeah, you have so, to be invested. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we had some good ones. We had music videos. We had, we had all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah. It was, it was cool. Yeah, and you might want to talk a bit about Common Pitch, another event coming up. Yeah. And the videos, I think, will be a part of that as well. Yeah. Kind of applying and, you know, just um, whether it's just a two or three minute video, um, just kind of expressing yourself and your ideas. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about yeah, the, sure. the you'll, pitch? So if you, go to, uh, if you go to the site, you'll see there's, there's three types of startup accelerators that we have. So Common MBA was our first one, and check the box, we did <laughs> it. Uh, project, which I just talked about, so that's late June. And then I want to say August 19th, which is a Friday, is our first sort of large-scale, large-format 
half a day startup accelerator program. It's called Common Pitch. It's going to be at the Boulder Theater. Uh, the way we like to describe it is kind of Y Combinator meets Tech Stars meets meets a rock show <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 15 entrepreneurs uh, mm -hmm. get a get a six minute slot to sort of pitch uh, their social venture it's a, a celebrity panel of judges if you can have celebrities mm -hmm. in sort of the uh, social venture world but there are and there, there's, sure. uh, and, and Boulder we're finding is an amazing place to be an entrepreneur and there's a uh, there's a bunch of sort of very high profile venture capital people here. There's amazing designers. And let's not also forget that it's not just about, you know, just just the uh, just the entrepreneurs in and of themselves. I mean, our, our vision with Common is we can design our way uh, sort of out of social problems and leverage design much in the same way that Mockby leveraged architecture to see if he could sort of architect uh, in, you know, help or change. Exactly. So, so back to Common Pitch, we're, we're really excited about this one and we're going to have our application page up fairly soon and kind of our process for that and how we're going to curate it and a lot more information will be coming down the pike for sure. Uh, did I do, was that okay? Did yeah, you? that's great. <laughs> the rock show is the most important part. Yeah, the rock show is probably the <laughs> no, most important Not really, part the idea sure. is the most it's important part. It's a dance party. <laughs> it's going to be a dance party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can fun, all though. do that. We've yeah, yeah. Um, Greensboro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't dance, by the way. I, I, you just I, I was, oh, I was okay. in and out. It was, it was too much. It was too much stimulation. My brain had already like exploded from the entire day of trying to right. launch a company. So I was like, can't do it. Um, <laughs> But uh, are you going to come to Common Pitch, you think? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. You could pitch it. Could you, I think she theoretically could pitch another idea, right? Sure. Why, why not? not? It never ends. I mean, she can go on Start another on. business, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, just a total uh, side note about you, Nicole, is that uh, you said you're an eight on the Enneagram. Yes. Yes, I'm an eight on the Enneagram <laughs> scale, which my, so my business was called Infinity, and the infinity, infinity symbol, -E yes, infinity spelled T-A, but the infinity symbol was our was my logo. But I did not take the Enneagram test until after I had already had the company and discovered I was an eight, and and it all made sense. It all it all came together. So <laughs> yeah. so what does that mean about you as an entrepreneur? Uh, because for me, I'm also uh -huh. an eight. And I think uh -huh. we, we we talked about this before the show today. Um, eights tend to be yeah. good activators for businesses. Um, yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think... Um, you are such good entrepreneurs. <laughs> Crazy eights. <laughs> Crazy eights. Uh, for control. Control, yeah, I like to have control, um, which, you know, in some areas of life is kind of difficult. But, uh, you know, for me too, uh, I think being an eight means that I'm, I'm never really completely satisfied and that could be a good thing it, it could also be a little bit of a bad thing but the good thing is you know recently I was talking with a friend of mine and I said I'm just I just don't feel successful I just I'm ready for something else I need to do something else and go on to the next thing and his chin like hit the floor and he's he said what do you mean you you started a business you sold a business and created a job for yourself that didn't exist like, you know, you didn't just apply for a job that was open and you had to win, you know, or beat right. out 300 applicants or something. Like, you created this whole thing. And here you are telling me that you're not, not satisfied. But, I, but the, the part of that is, is that's what gives me the drive to keep trying to achieve and to keep doing more. And, you know, I don't want to just be complacent. I didn't, I didn't want that to be you know, the pinnacle of my career, as I said in my video, I wanted that to be a stepping stone uh, of my career because I'm mm. youngish. <laughs> youngish. <laughs> as am I. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to find more uh, people in, or, or, we need to find more eights. More eights, yeah. More, more people for, who for are, and, and I think too, maybe and, Enneagram, an quickly, nine personality types, check it out online. Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> Yeah, -E I, I think also maybe um, being an eight, well, as an entrepreneur, I think it makes you realize, you know, like sometimes when I had my own business, I was 
brewing tea, bottling tea, labeling tea, uh, but also trying to figure out QuickBooks and um, trying to understand who are my customers, who am I gonna sell this to, who am I marketing this product to, how am I gonna distribute from the three stores to 10 stores, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, I think it lets you kind of get your, get your hands dirty and see all, all aspects Got it. of it. Where now I, I have a job and I kind of manage one aspect of the business. Right. Which is different. So would there ever be a common T? <laughs> Two years maybe after my not compete is up. <laughs> That's funny. Or we, or we, we, we put it out to some other entrepreneur. Whatever. Right. It doesn't mean right. it has to be kombucha, right? Right, yeah, exactly. That's true. It doesn't have to be kombucha. I love it. And we don't know Jeff's personality type quite yet. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. Take the test. I'm you, sure you I'll take, take it. Maybe yeah. everybody at the cottage should take the test. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's definitely room for lots of personality types. Aids are obviously important, right. but yeah. you know, there's lots of different designers and creative people. And whether you th whether or not you think you're a creative person, you probably are. You just need to kind of flex that muscle. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're doing with Common is realizing that a lot of people don't want to just sit around and watch TV, they'd rather get out there and yeah. do something. Make stuff. And, yeah, do something. Yeah, try to make this world a better place. Yeah, and I, and I think that's uh, sort of a good notion to um, sort of wrap this up a little bit, which is, which is um, you know, there's the design side of the equation, there's the entrepreneur side of the equation, yeah. there's the capital side of the equation. It, 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 you know, it almost takes a village, probably, to make mm -hmm. a company and, and, and to make it work. Uh, and and I, I just think that's really important. And, you know, what we love about using creative and design in common is that it makes us think in a totally different way. And conventional ways of thinking sort of don't work in this process at all. And uh, our partner, John, uh, talks about the notion of thinking wrong. And the, the, the people that are out there that sort of think the most wrong, if you will, probably you could sort of uh, ascribe it more towards the creative thought process, you know, a non-linear process right. that can sort of, you know, synthesize a lot of different stuff like that. And you're creative. I mean, you're, you know, you're a designer by trade. Yeah. You're kind of perfect. <laughs> you should work here. Oh, yeah? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> And, uh, and, and I think that one thing to note on Common Cycles is we've got three people, it looks like, who are going to sort of activate the business. It's going to be you, it's going to be Pam, and, uh, and Mark, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got people on the ground. You're here in Boulder, but your work's mm -hmm. going to be incredibly important. And that's, yeah. Thank, no, I... thank goodness for Google Docs, right? <laughs> no, now Basecamp. Are we, are we Google base Docs camp? did not like my Excel spreadsheet like yesterday. <laughs> I moved to Basecamp. <laughs> we love it all. Yeah. And the action method, we love that too. Yeah. So that'll be in there. So yeah, it'll be, that, that'll definitely be. Uh, right, so that group and then a lot of other kind of advisors, Steve Bemke and Ben Morrison of Handsome Cycles, a lot of real smart bike people behind this kind of pushing it forward and just a great team overall. It's great. Well, good. I think we're, uh, I think we're going to need to wrap the show. Right. And, uh, Thanks so much goodbye. for having me. Thank you very much. It was <laughs> awesome to have you on the show. Jeff, I'll see you in 10 minutes upstairs. <laughs> right. desks, I guess. Yeah, back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think that, uh, that closes it out for us today. So thanks everybody for tuning in. <laughs> Sorry for my sweaty hands. It's good. It's good torture. To come up to me and like, right? Oh, it's.